desire spiritual encounters and we are not getting it because heaven knows how we are going to handle it. Now, when you look through the word of God, you understand that when they met with Jesus or whenever whoever had an encounter with God, the Bible said that fear came upon them and they fell on their face as if they were dead. That means absolute fear will come. Now, my prayer is that it will become natural for you to experience God. Amen. Amen. But when you do, don't be afraid. Amen. Because when you look through the word of God, you understand also there are some men and women in the word of God that were so bold. You should, Moses said, let me see your face. I need to see your glory. He demanded for the glory. He has seen a lot, so now he has built confidence. Amen. Remember the first time he saw the glory of God? He said, what a great sight. That was the, the tree that was had fire on it but was not burning. He said, let me step aside and see this great sight. That means when the glory of God encounters you, you must step aside. You must leave off the things that you are doing and you step into the things that heaven has called you. Very important this year that we must know who we are. Identity is very important this year. And that is why in this ministry, I've come to understand that if you if you if a if you're a follower of the teachings that flow from this altar, you understand it's all about releasing to you what you know, what you have, who you are. It's actually about your identity, telling you you are too loaded to fail, telling you why this thing should not happen and why this thing should happen in your life. It's actually revealing your identity as a son. You know, that's the basic you know, of this ministry, actually revealing, opening the eyes of our understanding to know exactly what heaven has in store for us. I, I posted uh, some stuff, but I removed it because it's going to be a teaching for some time, uh, some time coming. I, I know, I, but some people who were sharp enough to have seen that post when it lasted for maybe five minutes today, and I removed it, would have seen it. I said something there that was very important. I said, when you receive a reward by, the re by reason of service, is called wages because the Bible says something said a worker is worthy of his wage so when you receive a reward from heaven by the reason of your service probably in the church probably you are serving the man of God it's called what it's called a wage now when you receive a reward by reason of covenant sometimes we enter covenants sometimes you know we have a covenant with God father I'll be giving you this every month you know, we enter covenant with God. He said, if you receive a reward by the reason of covenant, it called a right. It is your right because it's a covenant. So what is covenant? Covenant means he will do his part, you will do your part. So when he does his part and you do your part, then what you receive is called a right. Amen. But when you receive your reward based on relationship, it's called an inheritance. Amen, somebody. When you receive a reward based on relationship, it's called an inheritance. Now, when you have an inheritance, you can put the two others under it. So, relationship is greater than covenant. Relationship is greater than service. So, as a son of God, what you receive from God is dependent on your relationship. We must graduate to that point where we receive from God based on relationship. Yes, we'll serve him. He's still going to pay us. I, I used to tell some people, I said, if I serve God, he will pay me. I have no doubt about it. And he has been paying me. Amen? There is no doubt about it because the Bible said, a worker is worthy of his way. If you are not being paid, if heaven is not paying you while you are serving, Check your service. Check your service. Either you are, you are doing it for eye service, or either you are not humble about it. You know, there's some people that are serving just because they were forced to serve. Or one of the things that I see that creeping people's reward in service, especially in this nation, is too much backbiting and envy. It's either they are criticizing this woman. This one doesn't know how to do it. It's either they are criticizing this one. Or sometimes you see even deep people serving in the church criticizing the pastor. And then they expect a reward from the same house. 
you are crippling your wage. You are crippling. It's just stop doing for the Christmas service. Just sit down. Don't sit. One of the keys to successful service in church are those these things. I'm, I'm, and you know, greatness is attached to service. Two things that carry greatness: humility and service. He that will be greatest amongst you all shall be the servant of all. That means it's not about preaching from the pulpit. If I cannot take the towel and wash your feet, I have not started. That means humility in service is key to greatness. You can't be great without service. And you can't be great without humility. Because God will oppose the, the pride and will give grace to the humble. And then you humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he shall, he shall what? Lift you up in your time. So, these two things, service, humility, very key. Key point to your greatness. So, if you have not started serving yet, you are wasting time. Many of you just sit down, come to church, you go. Where, let me ask you, where are you serving God? How are you serving God? For you to grow in this kind of, you see, many times when people look at me, they say, hey, man of God. That's why, so, you see, everybody you see in this church as a pastor has been here at least two years. And ask them how they started. Ask them how they started. We don't, I, personally, I don't believe in you walk in today, you are pastor tomorrow. You need to prove yourself through service. I need to see you confident being at that door, opening doors, and don't feel I'm too anointed for it. When I came to this nation, I was an usher at NCICF. I was an usher. And later on, I became a worship leader. I, I, I think I still have one or two people here. He said, I became worship leader for two and a half years. I knew I was called as an, as an apostle to this nation to set people free. I knew my responsibility on this nation, but the way up is humble yourself under someone. I did it for two and a half years. Amen? Right back in Nigeria, I was assistant usher. I mean, I, I served through it and heaven will gradually put you up there. Gradually, you will be announced. Gradually, you will be announced. One day, you will be standing at that door. And then somebody comes in and you shake the person. The person falls under that anointing. Suddenly, people say, ah, he carries something. Old. She has something. Old. One day, you will be worshiping here and suddenly, you raise your hand up and sing and something begins to happen. Ah, I didn't know she's that anointed. Old. You see, heaven begins to announce you gradually. Whoever announces himself in ministry first has made a mistake. Nobody announces himself first. Remember what I said, first. But a day will come, you can boldly say, I am. Mm. But before Jesus can do that, the God needs to announce him. John the Baptist needs to go before him. To, and that means there are men that are set before you to bring you in. Even ministry wise. That's why a lot of people have spit the fingers that should feed them. And then they are stuck on place. But they are great men of God. Great women of God. I don't know why I'm going this way. But I believe you will help me. So the question is, where are you serving? And are you, are you comfortable serving where you are serving? It doesn't matter who doesn't like you. Do what you need to do. It doesn't matter who appreciates you or not. If you serve man, then you expect appreciation from man. But if you are serving God, you, 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 it doesn't matter whether I call you up and say, yeah, I appreciate you. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But the truth of the matter is that no matter how you are ignored, one day heaven will cause the king not to sleep until he remembers to reward you. That is the way it works. Mordecai was there for years upon years until one day the remembrance came. I wouldn't want to say a lot of stuff. I, you know, I went through why I served. I never for one day stood up and, you know. That's why when you see people that walk directly with me, I sit on daily basis. 
one of the major things I watch out for in their lives is not if they are perfect, it's if they are humble. I don't look at perfection. I look at humility towards me. You can't, you, if you want to serve me, you have to humble yourself. Amen? The truth of the matter is, while we are, while we are together, if an outsider comes and doesn't know who is who, you might not know who is the pastor, who is not the pastor. Because I, 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 I relate and I, I, I joke with you. That's the truth. I, I joke and smile with you. But the day you forget I'm the pastor, I will remind you. <laughs> the day you forget I am the pastor and you are the one helping me out, I will remind you. If we go to any convention or anything, you know, you know, sometimes when, that's why it's very important for us to build relationship. Very important. More, more important than covenant the relationship. Covenant works, service works, but relationship is key. Relationship is key. Relationship is key. Because that's the only way you can receive. There are some people I know. Um, somebody called me up, a very good, you know, very good uh, daughter of mine. He said, Please pray for me. I noticed you don't pray for me. I said, No. There is a higher, greater anointing you receive by association than by me praying. There are some people here, I don't need to be laying hands on them. Sometimes the way they come for me to pray, for prayer, I say, Why do you come? By association, you should get this stuff. Amen. Oh, you've not heard about the companies of prophets. Saul so entered into their list and began to prophesy. The atmosphere will rub off you. You can't roll with grace and remain the same. You can't roll with grace and remain the same. You can't roll with anointed. See, the day you roll with an anointed man and your life is not changed, check yourself. Something is wrong. It's either you are criticizing the man behind you or you are not honoring the man. Honor is important to receive. Honor. So many young people are not receiving. Their lives are not being changed. Because they don't honor. And that is the reason why, you know, I've come to understand that. I didn't understand why pastors do these things, men of God do these things. If you watch all over, it's hard to get to men of God. Amen. You come, all you all come from churches. You don't finish services and you walk up to your pastor. So I want to see you. You need to go a few form. Sometimes you never get to see them. You see the assistant. And I used to ask, why do pastors do these things? I never understood it's something of honor. When people don't struggle to get to something, they don't honor you when they get there. If you easily walk up there and see me, whether you have anything important to say or not. Then suddenly he, he, he gives you the impression, well, I can see him anytime. And sometimes people write me on Facebook, and if I don't respond, they are upset about it. Pastor, I've been writing you for two days now, and I didn't respond. <laughs> Some people don't have fear. Will you write your pastor at home and say, I've been writing you for two days, and he didn't, get, he didn't respond to me? No fear. But, you see, it is the kind of ministry we are doing here. We need to understand that we are dealing with this, this team. So, the first question I will throw you this year, where, are you, what, what, where is your service? Ask somebody now, where are you serving? You want to be great, oh yeah, where are you serving? There's a, a young man I've, I've been watching in one of their live houses. You know, a powerful man of God. Soon I will just introduce him. Powerful man of God. But now he's an usher. Oh, I don't want to call his name. One of, one of the churches. Powerful man of God. And this year God said to me, watch him. When, he's, when he started up, he, you know, he came to me and said, well, you will give me opportunity to minister. I said, I said to my mind, you don't know who you're talking to. <laughs> you need to prove yourself. Humble yourself. 
I didn't know what just happened to him. He just went to the door. Now he ushers in the shop. And one day as I'm walking in, God said, look at him. He has proven himself. So one of these days now, we will launch another heavyweight. Amen. From Austria to the pulpit. That's the way a kingdom works. Have you ever asked yourself what Jesus was doing for 30 years? Have you ever asked yourself? Huh? He knew he is Jesus, Savior of the world, the God Himself, but was silent for 30 years. Go ask yourself. 30 years? By the age of 12, he already knew some stuff that he was discussing with the best in town and they were amazed by his knowledge by 12 years. So that means he could have started by 12 and scatter everybody. But he was silent for how many years? Till 30. And still so silent that he had to wait for another man to announce him. He said, the one coming after me is greater than I. The one that will announce you will not be afraid of your greater height. That's the truth. That's the truth. Do you know that it's in service that heaven, heaven clears your way? You discover yourself more when you serve. Amen. Never knew what I had until doing no ushering and then the pastor then called me and said, said can you come and share the word with us? Just one time I shared the word then. He said, no, you, I give you one slot every month. Let I turn to two. Let I say, go start, start Saturday fellowship. From there, from there, from there, from there. Outreach minister. From there, from there. A lighthouse. You had the calling. So in the 3rd of September, 2006, met with Jesus face to face. So I've called you as an apostle to the nations. And gave me a mandate. Go set them free. So there's a mandate of freedom of my life. I can say it any place, any time. Nobody take this honor unto himself. I didn't call myself. So that's why sometimes when the when when the, everything ceases like this, or not like ceases when op opposition then, because all the oppositions now has crippled. <laughs> because everybody knows who is who now. Yes, sir. So when the opposition was, I always go to God and say, "You called me," and I will remember. I remind you, twenty third September. One time, I, I remember one time, a challenge came, I stood and I said, Father, between me and this person, if I am called to this place in two weeks, it's either I leave or this person leaves. After one week, the person carried the bag and left. The mom's business collapsed. They called the, called the person and said, the mom said, your ticket is one year and it's expiring in three days. The one year ticket, she got to go come back in. He said, he said, make sure that you use that. He said, expire in three, three days. Make sure you come back in three days. Because there's no money for you to come back after them. Left. Till today, the people that knew what I said, they still begging. Because they said, this, this person's life is scattered. Don't challenge a man that knows who he is. Have this in mind. Nobody can challenge you when you know your identity. Sickness cannot challenge you. As I'm looking through this crowd, I see great and weak, great and great men and women of God. You see, there's only one pulpit here, but there are many pulpits out there. What 
we supposed to talk about today? Prayer. Prayer. Please, I prophesy to somebody here. Anything that is hidden in your life that has to do with your glory. Anything. I'm prophesying because I saw something. That's why I'm prophesying. And by the word, the only hope for the dry bone is a word of prophecy. He said, can these bones live? The prophet said, only you know. And he said, now speak to them. Anything in your life that is limiting your greatness from coming alive, this night they are dropping off you in the name of Jesus. Whatever makes mockery at who you are. They are being silenced right now in the name of Jesus. Whoever stands against you will know they are standing against God. Let me tell you the truth. People don't understand it. When you stand against the man of God, you stand against God. You and God will do it. I read in the Bible, I, I've forgotten the name. When they were attacking the disciples, they, they, one of the, the men, the high priest then said to them, he said, you, you people should not bother this man, this man. If what they are doing is of God, it will stand. But if it's of men, with time, it will collapse. He said, but then, less few people are found to fight against God. Many people are fighting against God in this nation. They think they are fighting against man. <laughs> 